There are actually three major flavors of NAT out there. Static NAT, Dynamic NAT, and NAT Overload, which most people call PAT, and that's going to be what I talk about in this micro nugget. Now, I'm not going to get too heavy into the concepts because my good friend Keith Barker has created a micro nugget talking about the NAT concepts uh, as well, so I'd encourage you to check that out. I'm going to focus solely on the configuration. Here's our overview. You've got a home or small office to where you've got the Cisco router connecting to the internet service provider. That is bridging the gap between your internal world, which has some internal scheme, and if you're like every home in America, you probably have 192.168.1. something as your internal network, which houses all your computers and servers and Xbox and whatever else you have running on your internal network, and this is going to be the NAT boundary. That will be where our story begins. I'm going to bring up a NAT router, which all I've done is give it the host name, I am NAT, and give it the IP addresses that you can see here on this interface. Now, I'm assuming that on this router, Fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 is plugged in to the internal network, and Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 is plugged into the internet, both of them being fast Ethernet interfaces because I'm assuming this is maybe a DSL or Cox uh, well Cox is our service provider that we'll say cable modem uh, uh, provider that is is sitting out here on the internet so we've got those two connected I want to NAT from this side of the network network to this side first thing I need to do identify my interfaces I'm gonna go into fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 and type in IP NAT inside which says this is the inside interface that I'm connecting to now this is actually an emulated router on GNS three if this were a real router it actually hangs for about three seconds there gives you a heart attack if you're in a production environment don't worry it will come back I'm gonna go into interface fast Ethernet zero slash one and type in IP NAT outside to tell it that's the outside interface no hang there now second step I need to create an access list that identifies which IP addresses are allowed to be translated now access list could be a whole huge topic in itself As a matter of fact it is I created an access a, a, a micro nugget just on standard access list, which is what I'm going to use right here. I'm going to do IP access list standard, which allows me to use a name, and we'll say NAT these addresses. That's just the name I decided to call it. I'm going to say permit, and it says, well, what do you want to permit? 192.168.1 addresses, of course, my router. I'm going to give it the wildcard bits of 000255. What on earth is that? Bizarro wildcard bit got its name because it is exactly the opposite of the subnet mask. Now, everybody knows 192.168.1.0 slash 24 is really 255, 255, 255, 0, but in bizarro land wildcard mask world, it's 0.0.0.255. .0 .0 .0 five crazy thank you Cisco so I'm gonna back out of there it's done I now have this access list that identifies my internal IP addresses now it's time to put it all together with one magic command it is going to be IP NAT inside source list and then I type in the name of that list. Now I know right about now you're going, what? <laughs> what? This was all good until you did that. Uh, I'm going to explain this. In this. Let me type the command and then I'll read it to you in plain English. Uh, source list, NAT these addresses, out interface, fast Ethernet 0 slash 1, and overload it. What did I just type? I'm going to go back there and read it in English. IP NAT that says, Cisco router, I want a NAT. From the inside of my network out, the source addresses, oh yeah, those are identified in access list, not these addresses. So I'm telling you, not these addresses. Now, destination, I want to send them out. Interface, oh, I'm falling off the end. Uh, interface, fast Ethernet, 0 slash 1, and overload that. See, if I forgot that overload keyword, it would only work for the very first person to get out, and then it wouldn't share that outside address for anybody else. In this case, I want to overload it, which is how we use PAT. That's, it actually uses ports to figure out uh, how to share one IP addresses for multiple uh, devices. Once I hit the enter key on that, I am now configured for NAT. It is ready to go. There are actually many more NAT configurations that you could do, but that will get you up and running and get people surfing the internet, which we all know will boost everybody's productivity. Right? Right? Any, anyhow, if you'd like to see those other NAT configurations, please leave a comment at the bottom of this video of what you'd like to see, and we'll see if we can create some micro nuggets for those. For now, my name is Jeremy Chara. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing. What do you mean internet access doesn't boost productivity?